Hey everybody, this is Jeff. We're going to talk today about how to use the database EBSCO. So we're on the library website here. Here's EBSCO in the electronic database list. I'm going to click into here. And there's different different ways you can use this database. Uh, depends on what kind of a class you're looking for. The most general database in the EBSCO list is Academic Search Premier. If you're just doing some general research for an English class or a psychology class, this would be a great one to use. You can click as many as you want to search at one time. Uh, and there's, there's different subjects in here, like this psychology and behavioral sciences would be a good one for a psychology class. I usually, and CINAHL, that's a nursing one, I'm going to go directly into academic search from here. I'm just going to click on this link and go in. Let's say I'm just doing some general research today. Academic Search Premier is by far the biggest database that they have. So we've got this search screen here. It's set up on the advanced search page. And we're just going to type in some terms. Uh, I'm going to type in uh, schizophrenia. Do a search here. See how many articles come back. And by default in this database, they're all going to be full text articles. We have that turned on. If you want to just look for abstracts, you can turn that off. But leaving that on, you'll just find all full articles. So it shows you right there, uh, the database found 14,931 full articles on this. We probably want to narrow that down a little bit. Let's say select field. Select a field. It's just searching generally. Let's say schizophrenia has to be in the titles of the articles. And these are just ways we can modify this to make this more manageable. So now we have 6,254. Now you notice schizophrenia is in the titles of all of the articles here as we look down the list. Okay, and let's say so. Here's uh, here's some articles. Here's one from Newsweek Global, Time.com. Let's say we we don't want to look at just general magazines like that. Let's say we want to look only at more academic resources, things published in medical journals, science journals, psychology journals. Your instructor will call, will probably call those peer-reviewed or academic journals. If you're being asked for that, or if you want to see the higher-level research-based information. You can go over here and click Peer Reviewed. Once you click Peer Reviewed, it's automatically going to narrow it down. So notice I'll, I'll take that off. So we have 5,892. If I take that off, it jumps back up to 6,254. If I click this, it's automatically going to figure out how many of those are peer reviewed from the higher level journals here. We've still got 5,892. Uh, if we wanted, we could add some other terms to this, like maybe we could say medication or drug or something pharmaceutical. Now what we can do, you can now notice how I'm doing these ORs here. So also with schizophrenia in the title, I'm gonna leave that box alone. I want it to in these articles also be dealing with medication or drug or far, some kind of pharmaceutical thing. I'm gonna put that all in that one box, this or this or this, but it has to have that. Now pharmaceutical could be pharmaceutical, pharmacy, there's different, there's different uh, pharmacological, different forms of that word. I'm going to do a little shortcut here. At the end of that word, farm, I'm just going to put an asterisk. So it searches for every version of that word. So again, it has to have this word in the title. And these one of those words has to be in there somewhere, in some form of that word. So we click search from our 5,892. Now we're down to 1,934. Okay, what if medication or drug or pharmacy was in the subject of the articles. Maybe not the title like the other ones. So subject terms. Let's redo the search now. Again, they're still peer reviewed. Now we're down to 1,101. And the most current articles are going to come back first. Notice here July 2014. I'm recording this in August 2014, so that's pretty current. But we could even make it more current. Let's say it's searching articles going all the way back to 1961. Let's say let's pull this here pull this date slider, let's say 2001 to 2014. Now we're down to 970. Still a lot, still a lot in here. Um, let's say we, we could keep narrowing it down or we could just start looking. Like I said, already it's going to have uh, the, most, the most recently published articles. Maybe we want to make it even a little more specific. Maybe this instead of subject, maybe that wasn't specific enough. We could say title. Now this word or that word or some form of that word has to be in the title as well as schizophrenia in the title. Do a search. Now we're down to 230. So if there's an article that we want to take a look at, let's just click on it. So this is a listing of the articles. When the article comes up, it tells us all about the article here because it's the title, here's the authors, 
here's where it was published, here's when it was published. And then if you want the full article, look right over here, PDF full text. There's the full article right there. And it's going to find that article. Sometimes people use this database and they think, well, I could never actually find the full text of the article. I just it told me about the article, but it never gave it to me. That's because in many cases you have to click on that full text button. And so here's the full article here. Now if you wanted to, you could go over here on this print icon. You could print it out. You could email it to yourself. You could add it into a folder in this database to look at it later. And then you could also, if you wanted to, uh, you could just download this. If you hover around here, here's a little ghosting box that comes up. You could save this. I could save this in my folder somewhere in my, my documents. Or another thing that's really nice about this, and we'll, I'll cover this more fully in another video, but right over here, look at this site. If you click on site, it'll bring up some citations. So let's say you were looking for an MLA citation for this. Here's an MLA citation. It's a pretty good citation. You're going to have to make some changes to it, but you can copy and paste this into a Word document and then edit it into the correct format. I'll, I'll cover that more in another video. Um, but those are some of the different things that you can do with this database. If we want to go back, just click results list, and it brings us back to our results. We could set, we could set more uh, more limits on this to make it a smaller list or we could try some different things add more terms to it uh, but that that's the basics of how to use ProQuest so that'll get you started I'll cover more specifics in other videos but that uh, should get you going with ProQuest let me know if you have any questions thanks a lot